So, you can probably tell, as soon as this video started, that it's not theme park related. And it's closed season. It's January. Essentially, I've got a Game Boy, which I've had since... I can't remember how long. Years. 90s, in fact. Um, I've kind of recently cleaned it up a little bit. Just given it a bit of a, a scrub from the case. Looking a bit shinier. One thing I did notice when I was trying to get it working again, because I haven't actually used it for 20 odd years, is when I start it up, there is no noise. The speaker's obviously blown in it at some point. The, uh, the volume button on the side seems to go up and down, but there's still no sound coming out of the speaker. Uh, I've had a quick look online, and apparently there's a couple of different issues that can affect the original Game Boys. One of which is that the, ear the contacts in the earphone connector kind of corrode and get stuck open, which means that effectively it's trying to push the sound through the earphone socket and not through the actual speaker. Um, so in order to troubleshoot any of them, the first thing you have to do is kind of take it apart. So that's what I'm going to do now. The first thing to do is to make sure that any game cartridges are taken out, and obviously the batteries as well. are out. Now there is a number of screws that you have to take out to be able to take the case off and the screws are actually I think they're called tri-wing screws so they're, they're not Phillips crosshead screws they're kind of a triangle shape I'm not sure you can pick that up on the camera which means that you have to buy a special screwdriver to take them out or if you're really careful Use a really small flat blade of screwdriver, which you can just about get the screws out. I didn't have a tri wing screwdriver. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I've taken all five of the screws out. Drawing the edges. There should be six. But last time I took it apart just to clean the case, uh, one of them snapped off. So... Now, it should separate. What you've got to be careful of when you separate it is there's a little ribbon connector between the two sections that you can see there. And effectively, you slide it out of that top section there just to release the top section from the bottom section, which I'll go ahead and do now. So, I've taken it apart. You can see the ribbon. I had to disconnect from that connector there to separate the two sides. Obviously, this side is your kind of battery compartment. You've got the earphone circuit board at the bottom there, all connectors that are attached to that board, and on this side, which is the screen side, you've got the volume control, and then you've got the internal speaker. There's a few things you can do to test, to try and identify whether or not it's the speaker at fault, or whether or not it's the connector that's inside the earphones. Well, the main things you can do is you can get a Multimeter, that's what they're called. Uh, and you can effectively check the continuity between the two connectors. So there's that connector there and the one just above it there. I think if there's no earphone cables in, you should get continuity. And if you put earphones in, it moves a little pin inside the earphone connector, which I'll show you shortly. And that stops the continuity and the uh, you can tell whether or not the actual earphone ports work in there, which kind of rules that out, meaning that it's probably going to be the speaker. So we'll check that to see whether or not it is the speaker. I've already kind of bought the speaker wherever it's gone. Let me just find it. It was really cheap, so I got one in advance. They're about, I think it was about three quid off Amazon. Hopefully, it's going to be the right size. It looks a bit tall, to be honest. But hopefully it'll be the right size. So if it's a speaker, I could just swap it straight out rather than to take the whole thing apart again. So the first thing I'm going to do is just unscrew these two screws here. And that little board there should come off. So I've disconnected the earphones connector. And just to show you, but in the bottom left-hand corner there, you've got a little L-shaped pin. When those are kind of, when that long bit is touching the bit next to it, when there's no earphones in, that should reroute the sound through to the built-in speaker. And if I plug it in with a pair of earphones, just bear with me, I'll do this one-handed, you should see, hopefully it's focused on the camera, you should see that pin move away like that. 
and effectively that then stops it being routed to the speaker and it routes it through the earphone connector instead. Um, one thing to note is even though the speaker wasn't working when I turned the Game Boy on, the actual earphones were working. So I know that obviously fundamentally the sound's working in the Game Boy. It's just whether or not this actual uh, contact is working or not. Um, one thing I'm not sure about is whether or not that contact is actually working or not. So when it's pulled out, bear with me, when you pull it out, quite often those little pins can get corroded, which means it doesn't make a contact correctly, which means that you don't get sound through the earphone, uh, through the speaker. So one thing you can do to check that is the contacts on the other side here. These two on the end here, you can use a multimeter and check the continuity, which is what I'm going to do now to just rule out whether or not it's this uh, earphone adapter or whether or not it's the actual speaker that's at fault. So I've got my multimeter out and I put it on continuity mode. And now I've got my two connectors for my multimeter. And bear with me because I'm doing this one handed. But effectively, I believe if I touch that contact and that contact together, we should get continuity if there's no earphone in. So we should hopefully hear a beep. Just not very accurate. But as you can see, there's continuity there if I take them off. That's one. So the other thing I can just double check is if I put an earphone connector in, we should lose that continuity when we test it again, which means that that clip that supplies the power, the little adapter, is actually working. Bear with me while I try and get the multimeter in the right place to go. So, if I touch those this time, we shouldn't have any continuity. Which we don't. Which is good. That means that that earphone adapter is actually all right. Which is what I was hoping, because I spent £3 on a speaker. I didn't waste it. Right, so the next thing is I'm just going to screw that back onto the case there, because I know it's not that that's causing the issue. And then I'll move on to replacing the speaker. So, I've connected the little circuit board that's got the earphone connector back onto the case. I can try and put that to one side now, so I know it's not that that's causing the issue. So, the next thing we need to do is take a look at the speaker. So again, apparently, you can test the continuity on the speakers. So, let's get the multimeter again. And if we touch the contacts on each side of the speaker, we should be able to see some continuity. Right, okay. So, there's no continuity on that. Which apparently means that the coil in the speaker itself is broken. Which is the next thing I'm going to do is, by the look of it, remove the speaker. So it looks like there's a number of screws that we have to take out, because we're not going to be able to get that out without taking this board out. So it looks like there's kind of a few screws dotted around. So I shall just take those out. Hopefully we'll be able to get that board out, and therefore the speaker. Just taking a screwdriver and unscrewed the screws. I just need to remove them. Somewhere for safekeeping. Quite a few of them on this board compared to the rest of it. Another one hiding down there. I think that is it. Is that it? Yep, most of that is coming out. Speakers coming out as well. So there we go. So we've got the front bit of the case. It's got the buttons on it. And then we've got the circuit board. Just got the screen and the culprit there. The speaker actually it does look like there's something that's leaked into the speaker at some point, which is a bit grim. I'm not sure what that is. Possibly some battery acid. There was some batteries left in this when it was in the attic. And one of the things I did uh, last week was just give the case a bit of a clean up and get rid of any of the kind of the battery acid. All the contacts that were in the battery compartment were a bit corroded, so I'm going to give those a clean up as well. So the next thing to do, I think, is to unsolder the speaker thing before I unsolder the speaker is I've just got the new speaker out just to make sure it works before I go to the effort of unsoldering the other one. So again you check the continuity you can hear 
but we've got continuity. So that means that speaker's good. So yeah, as I said, I'm gonna move on now. Gotta solder an iron out and unsolder these connections from there. So I've just got some of the Joneses Darcy's assistants to do some filming because I need both hands for doing this. So next bit is to effectively take the existing wiring off the speaker. So just gonna hold the solder and iron on, get some tweezers, and it should hopefully. After a few seconds, there we go, it's one wire off. Do the other one as well. There we go, it's both wires are off. So that's the speaker off, and then I shall get the new speaker and put that on. The new speaker now, and effectively the wires are going in exactly the same place as we were on the old one. So put the wire over where the solder is, heat up a little bit. It's one wire on, and then we'll do the same with the other wire. Pull that trick up. There we go. I think that's both the wires on. So the new speaker's soldered on. So the next thing to do is to I can't really test it until it's all back together because one of the features of the Game Boy, or it looks like, which I'm presuming, these little metal push things here. I'm assuming when that circuit board goes back into the case and it attaches to the other one on either side, they must make contact to make the whole thing work. So I don't think I can test it until it's actually all back together, which makes it more fun. Or not, because if it doesn't work, I've got to take it all back to get apart again. But hopefully it'll be fine. So yeah, the next stage is to put the board back into the case. So I'll just move that to one side. The first thing to do is put the speaker back in. Now the speaker was kind of the other way around a little bit, so the wires were pushed down there. It's a bit tricky one-handed, but I think I can just about do it. There we go. What I might do is just get a little screwdriver, or even the tweezers, and just push these wires back down the side there, which I think is where they came from. It kind of secures them a little bit. Stops them interfering with the case when I put the other side of the case on. There we go. That looks... Well, that's good. Well, it's just a case of a case, just a case of putting the uh, screws back in the case. So the word case, far too many times. So I've screwed all the screws back in to attach the board back into the case. Now I need to get the other side of the case back. And the first thing we need to do is connect this connector back in again, which there's no way I'm going to be able to do whilst videoing. So I'll do that. And I'll come back to you. So I've connected that connector in a little bit fiddly, put this back in, and then it's just a case of reassembling. So, case back on there. It's a little bit fiddly. There we go, it's back on. And it's just a case of putting the screws back in to hold it all together now, which is what I shall do next. I've reassembled. Case, put the screws in. Next thing to do is to put some batteries in it and do a bit of a test. Grab my batteries. Last one. Back on it. Not sure if it needs a game in it or not to make the noise. Make sure the sound's up on the side. The moment of truth, people. Will it ding? Will it do the iconic ding? Yay, the iconic ding. Doesn't sound too bad. I was worried about the quality of the sound maybe a bit diminished with the voice well, not speaker, but that seems all right. Quality game on that. Sounds fine to me. So, there we go. Turn off for a second. So yeah. It's one of my uh, Game Boys brought back to life. Got a few different Game Boys. Uh, this is the one I've had, obviously, the longest. This is the, uh, the MG01, is its official title. It's the original Game Boy. We've got a whole host of uh, 
for the Game Boys. We've got a bit of a retro game collect uh, game console collection. At some point, I'm sure we'll do a vlog on that as well. But for now, hopefully that might help anybody if they need to ever swap their speaker. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the speaker that I used, so feel free to purchase one off Amazon if you so need to. Until next time, stay awesome. Watching Coasting with the Joneses. Please like, share, subscribe, and most of all, stay awesome.